Oh, hey, hi. I'm Crazy Chris, and welcome to So Cool Science. Science you can't do right at home. I'm just checking out some burning up space dust and going over today's science file. And today's science file, it says, How can I collect micrometeorites? Well, that's a great question. Try this. Some people prefer this method where you take a magnet and run it through your rain drain and see so you get particles like that. But see, here's the problem with this method. So any of the things that are on the shingles that get washed off by the rain are gonna stick to the magnet, which means you're gonna have to spend like hours sorting through all the crap that's on your magnet. And, and nobody wants to sort through crap. Oh, what? Oh no, wait, huh? See, no, the box has gotta be, it's gotta be empty. Oh, and a white sheet of paper. You're gonna place the white sheet of paper in your box, you're gonna place this on your lawn, and then you're gonna add something in the box to weigh this all the way down. And then you're gonna let this sit for two to three days. Now, to make sure that these little specks are not dirt, you gotta get yourself a magnet. And what you're gonna do is run the magnet over all the black specks that you see on your piece of paper. Oh, by the way, I should probably warn you, whatever you do, do not sneeze. All right, two more days. That is so wicked cold, because they're micrometeorites. They're right there, they're right there on the piece of paper. You can see it out there way, way space and they came hurtling through through the Earth's atmosphere and there they are they're right there they're on your piece of paper so what exactly is a micrometeorite and what's the difference between a meteoroid a meteorite and a meteor well don't look at me take a closer look at this most of the meteorites that land on Earth start their journey in the asteroid belt or as leftover chunks of rock and space dust from the solar system formation 4.6 billion years ago. A few of these asteroids get pulled in towards the sun and begin an elliptical orbit that takes them around the sun and back out past Mars. These few asteroids shed material as well as gradually break up Earth's gravity pulls on the leftover meteoroids and space dust, hurtling them towards the ground 30 times faster than the speed of sound. This causes air molecules in the atmosphere to get compressed because they can't get out of the way fast enough, creating enough heat to actually burn the rock. This burning rock you see in the sky is known as a meteor. When Earth passes directly through a full debris field left behind by asteroids and comets, creates what's known as a meteor shower. Most of the meteors in Earth's atmosphere get burnt up completely. However, some of them make their way to the Earth's surface and become meteorites. Thousands of good-sized meteorites can be found on the Earth's surface each year, some weighing 70 metric tons, but most of these are micrometeorites as well as a few small rocks. Although you can spot some micrometeorites using a magnifying glass, these are best identified under a microscope as small, dark, rounded spheres or rocks that show signs that they've burnt up in the Earth's atmosphere, such as melting or even pockmarks. So now you know more about meteorites. You know, finding your own micrometeorites is why science is so cool.